Hey guys, and welcome to the video. Today we are going to be talking about my biggest mistakes buying and selling used pieces, and I will be giving you a guide on how to purchase a used timepiece and not get ripped off. So at the end of this intro, we're gonna hop right on into it, and let's get started. Alright guys, so I am a pretty new collector to the watch world and you might be watching this and saying, okay, well you only have like seven or eight, I'm actually not even sure how many time pieces I have at this point. You know, you've only owned so many uh, watches, how do you have anything to contribute to this conversation? And my answer to that is that I've actually purchased two of my seven or eight time pieces uh, used. So I do have a little bit of experience with this and I have done pretty well for myself um, in terms of buying used. I didn't get scammed or anything like that, but I have made one kind of big mistake and I'm going to tell you that at the end of the video, so be sure to stick around to see that. So here are the two watches that I bought used. We have a Christopher Ward Trident Pro uh, C60-600, uh, so this is water resistant to 600 meters. It's a great watch. Uh, I, I purchased it for about half of retail price, and uh, that's a pretty modern watch. And then my Omega, uh, this is a Genève, and this is actually from 1974. But today we're going to be talking about how to buy used. And honestly, there are a few different resources for you. So there is the Watch You Seek um, forums that you can go visit to find a watch and then basically all you have to do is, is make sure that you vet the seller. So really when you're buying a used piece, you are buying the seller. Um, if you don't know the seller and if they don't have a, a large reputation uh, online and you don't know if they're trustworthy or not, I would tend to avoid that although I have myself taken a few leaps of faith. It's always kind of a leap of faith when you're buying a used watch, uh, and it hasn't burned me yet. But again, I would be super careful and vet the person you're buying from. All right, so in addition to that, we have a few resources. We have the private forums on Watch You Seek. So if you go into Google and type in Watch You Seek, I'll probably have links in the description down below but uh, they have a forum dedicated to private sellers and sponsors and that's where basically you're going to find people like me putting their watches for sale for the general public to buy and you usually you can find really really good deals there uh, another place where you can find really good deals is the uh, subreddit called watch exchange so if you go to www.reddit.com r slash watch exchange you can find some pieces posted there. Usually the deals there are a little bit better because the, the people there don't really have as much of a reputation. That's actually where I bought my Christopher Ward from. So I got a pretty good deal on this and it was in good condition and the seller was all right. It, it all turned out okay. Um, but you do get a little bit of a better discount there. There is more limited selection than Watch You Seek. Honestly, if, if you wanna look for a used watch, the first place I would start is Watch You Seek, which is why I listed it first. Uh, the third uh, resource you have available to you is Chrono24. If you're not familiar, it's a, a watch site. You can download their app. They even have a mobile app and you can search for everything. They have a, a wide selection. The deals are not as good as Watch You Seek or Reddit, but they do have kind of like this uh, seller verification system. It's a little complicated to explain, but if you look through their website, you'll be able to figure it out. Um, usually it's pretty obvious what the good sellers are and what the not so good sellers are. So again, I would just stick to the good sellers. I've, 
I've almost purchased a watch there, but again, it, it's kind of that higher level, you know, above the, the thousand dollar mark. Although you can find some very nice vintage pieces um, for under the thousand dollar mark. So then finally, <laughs> this is a bit of a, a tricky one. Um, you can buy on eBay. And again, you have to look at the seller. You have to make sure, you know, how many transactions have they done? What's their feedback like? All that, all that stuff. Have they sold watches like this before? Um, so this is actually where I bought my Omega Geneva. And I made kind of a big mistake <laughs> with this watch. One of, the, one of the really interesting things you can kind of see on this watch uh, the, the crystal is in pretty good condition and, and the dial is also in pretty good condition. One thing that the seller did not mention was the dial was repainted. Uh, luckily, you know, I've, I've actually opened this up. I can open it up still. Um, it has a genuine movement and everything else looks pretty good as, as the picture is described. But the dial has been repainted and that was a detail that was left out. Uh, you know, it hurts resale value. And uh, the other thing that I wish I knew about this piece, this piece is in kind of bad condition. It has a few scratches on, on the side uh, here. I'm, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that. Maybe, maybe not. The camera doesn't seem to be focusing right now. Thanks camera. But uh, one thing I didn't know was the service costs from Omega. I thought, okay, well, this watch was about $300. Um, you know, how much could it be to service? And I looked it up recently and it, it's about $700 to $800 to service and get it restored and, and fix all the scrapes and the places where the uh, gold plating brushed off. So that's my, that was my biggest used watch buying mistake. Uh, I do have to shout out a few people that helped me with the background here. Uh, I, I know that it's not complete. I still have to do quite a few things. I just, I just printed out a few pictures today. I'm in kind of a rush. Um, so I would like to thank uh, Rebel699 and E. Zaval. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, for A, uh, saying that they wanted this video topic done. I actually teased this topic in my last collection review, which if you haven't seen, you should check out over here. And then I also want to uh, sh make a shout out to Richard R. Uh, I know YouTube displays your last name, but I don't want to say it on camera. And uh, I'd probably butcher the pronunciation, as you all know, from watching me pronounce watch names. Um, so he actually suggested printing out some of my favorite pictures and putting them on the wall. So I listened to your suggestion. I'm here. I'm here communicating with you guys. And uh, one last thing that I want to say before I wrap up this video, we will have a watch review coming out on Monday. I know the schedule has been kind of crazy recently. Uh, it was supposed to come out today, but the weather just didn't, uh, didn't cooperate with me. And then finally, I am putting up my Saarb 065 for sale. Uh, this is a, a watch that I acquired about a month ago. Honestly, I would like to get around $350 for it. Um, that would be used to help support the channel and you know buy new watches and you know review them for you guys. So if any of you are interested in purchasing the Saarb 065, uh, please send me an email if you go to uh, my channel, you'll be able to find my email address if you look hard enough. So, uh, or even just leave a comment or message me and I'll get back to you. Uh, I, I will definitely get back to you if, if money is, is involved. Uh, but I would like to thank all of you for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And uh, I have to do this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.